All right, good afternoon, guys. Um, in this video, I'm going to trade the New York lunch session live. So this, the runtime of this video is going to be 90 minutes. So, all right, um, guys, I'm already up. Uh, I'm up 2,500 fake dollars on the day. Um, I did reset the account a few times tonight. Because I made serious mistakes. So I was going to call that an inverted fair value gap, but the price traded through it. And then it looks like at this point it does not want to invert. Um, but we will see. I think this is probably worth a long. I mean, we made an order block here. I'm going to throw a long at this. Uh, I'm going to trade for 90 minutes. So this is going to be an hour and a half long recording uh, up until uh, 1330, which is New York lunch. Um, so I hope that y'all enjoy it. This is going to be uh, Top Step Trading New York Lunch. Uh, I'm going to be trading one contract. I've already got a good profit on the day. I don't want to jeopardize that too much. So you can see we've been working in the opening range gap. I think at this point we're probably looking at um, at least 8.42 quarters uh, during lunch. But uh, I imagine we're going to draw up into this uh, five minute uh, fair value gap up here. So I'm going to take this contract off at the high of that candle, so uh, 53 evens. Okay. I'm pretty sure we are going to drop to that. So take out this short-term buy side liquidity, take out that short-term buy side liquidity, move up into that five-minute fair value gap. I believe that is what the price is going to do. So I'm going to go ahead and put in a break-even stop. Seven. Let's see if we want to move up there now. If not, then we're probably coming back down to sell side. The thing about the fair value gaps inverting is it's just you know really difficult to know whether it's going to invert or not. You kind of have to play it by ear, or at least I haven't found really any way to to know. So, well, I don't know if I'll if I'll actually fully put up the um, like the full ninety minutes. If we get this trade, that would be showing you a live execution from you know, like a 46, 47 point trade. If we can get there, so I will just probably end the video honestly if if we get that trade. I'm still going to follow this idea. I think that price is going to draw back up to this five minute fair value gap above this buy side, above that buy side. Uh, and it could even make a new high on the day. Probably not in one fell swoop, though. Probably not during the lunch session. Um, so, price drew down to this 10 minute order block here and down to this one minute fair value gap. And we've got a higher low. So, Guys, the patterns that I use, fair value gaps, uh, gaps and order blocks. Okay, so inverted fair value gaps, inverted order blocks, that's what I use now. I've decided to just kind of shun everything else. So fair value gaps and uh, order blocks.
You know, guys, if we get this straight, I'll just stop the video there, and you'll get to see a live simulated execution. The nice thing about trading on just one contract is you're not so nervous about it. So, you know, I feel okay just letting this thing uh, do its thing, letting it run, move the stop, break even stop up. So now we're playing with, with house money. I feel comfortable. Um, whether this trade wins or lose really makes, is no of great, it's not of great import to me. Of course, I want it to win. I would prefer to uh, get up above 3k on the day than not but um, you know Yeah, you can't really get funded uh, in two days unless you make exactly $4,500 on day one and exactly $4,500 on day two. So I'll probably stop after this. I mean, this is a good way to start this account, get on that grind again to try and get up to 159 get funded. Once I get funded, this account's got a big bonus associated with it. I got a two months subscription bonus. So I've no incentive to go to the Top Steps new model. I have every incentive to stick with this account and just keep resetting it whenever I blow out. Uh, which I have been improving and cutting out a lot of the stupid mistakes, so I don't think I'll continue to blow out. Um, I'm really glad this is not real money. It would have blown out 30 times over. Uh, but if this were my real money, obviously I would never trade more than one contract. It's just too dangerous, and it's a lot of money, even one contract. Uh, when I get funded, I'll probably just stick to one contract, to be honest with you. Um, maybe two contracts during the overnight session. But I have no interest in risking a funded account at all. I really want to build it up over time, so... Uh, I'll probably, if when I get to Express Funded, um, really slow down, like a lot, like two, one, two contracts. Uh, break even stops, you know, kind of reasonable profit targets, and then all the other risk management things like not playing the open, not playing economic releases, not playing FOMC. I think all those things considered, I could make way more than I was as an attorney on a daily basis. I, already, I mean, this is already my my day right here, 460. That's That was more than I made in a day. So the ability to make that on a daily basis on a funded account yeah, it's a good life, honestly. A few thousand dollars a day, a thousand dollars a day, it's five k a week. Twenty five, it's it's uh, twenty k a month. Next thing you know, twenty times twelve. I mean, you're making over two hundred thousand dollars a year, so. That's on one contract, guys. One. It's a lot. It's a lot, guys. You think, that, so these moves, every time that they, you know, you imagine, you you know, a lot of people don't make $530 in a day, right? And I just made that just sitting here just talking to you in seven minutes. And, and I, I think the market was going to go push through this and maybe even make a new high. But I have no incentive to push that, uh, especially if I'm not if I'm making real money and I'm able to catch trades like this consistently. Even just this right here, just pull this, five hundred bucks. Yeah, I mean if it's real money. Yeah. So, 
I'm really only pushing this so hard just to get funded. And then once I'm at Express Funded and I'm able to get under contract and start making money, uh, you will not really be seeing me ever trade more than two contracts, even in the overnight session. Two contracts will be where I max out because um, I can pretty easily pull down 1K a day. I know that sounds crazy, but I do it pretty regularly when I'm not making stupid mistakes. Um, 20 point trade right there. That's 500, 40 point trade on the NASDAQ, which happens pretty regularly. That's 1K. Can I pull down 1K a day on the NASDAQ? I think so. Yeah, I do think so. Crazy as that sounds, I know that that sounds like no way could you really do that. Yeah, I can. I really can, 100%. And not even doing anything crazy. All right. Let's see here. No reason to think that the market should stop drawing higher from that. At least push through. Although we are coming up reclaiming an order block. That high right there, we'll go 8.14.25. Yeah, I'm going to be honest with you. Uh, I love day trading. Um, and that's part of the reason why I trade at times I probably shouldn't trade. Like I trade Asia. London, I think, is tradable. Like usually the overnight session from 0200 to 0530, the London session is pretty tradable. I usually will at least have a 20 point range. But Asia usually is not, usually is not even worth it. Um, it's just really tough for me to say because I'm like a hard working guy and I like to be productive and when I'm trading I'm feeling like I'm being productive. It's part of the reason why I do the YouTube channel. I'm like a workaholic. I can't not do something. I've got to be producing something. And so the YouTube channel allows me to feel like I'm working because I am working. I'm making a video uh, while I'm not trading. And, and that's kind of the thing about trading is that you can pretty easily overdo it. The market's always moving. I mean, you know. But can I make $1,000 a day by being really, in, you know, wise about when I'm trading? Say I'm only trading the day session and I'm only trading 0950 to 1010. You know, I'm trading after the New York Open and I just trade the day session. Do I think I can pull down a 1K a day? Everything I've seen will tell me that I can do that. Uh, the only days that would be an exception to that would be like FOMC. And you can trade FOMC, but at the very end of the day, like last hour. Last hour. There's really no point in. Here's a five minute chart. There was Wednesday's trading. You can see the last hour of trading from 1500 to 1600. You had a pretty decent tradable move there. I could definitely have seen that. This move back up, even the move lower, uh, that was definitely a tradable event. I wouldn't, you know, but obviously the morning session during FOMC, it would, you know. Anyways, but like Tuesday's trading, regular trading hours. Could I have gotten in on that order block right there? Yeah, for sure. Could I have gotten in on that fair value gap? Push higher? Yeah. Monday's trading? Um, could I have gotten in there? Let's see. 0950? Yeah. Yeah. I might not even trade overnight going forward. I don't know. Maybe the London session. Yeah. So starting at 0200. Now, of course, tonight was an exception to the rule. There's your London session right there. Start from 0200. I get in a lot of trouble from resettlement to um, London. It's really not a good time for me. Asia. London starts at 0200. That's when the Frankfurt Stock Exchange opens. Goes really all the way up until 1130, New York local time, when the London Stock Exchange closes. Of course, that overlaps with New York. Um, but the AM session is 0200 to 0530. That's a very tradable time, usually. 
Um, all right, looking at this right now, we're gonna go ahead and pull that. All right, we're at 28.75. I'm on one contract. I think it's probably gonna draw back down to this five minute fair value gap here. Or it might just find immediate support and push higher uh, right here. Um, I'm gonna stay flat in any event. I think it's probably gonna, looking like it's probably at least wanna come back down to maybe 803. The thing about Asia, right, is that the market is just not moving. And it's just, when the market's not moving, it's very hard. Of course, this Asian session moved a lot. Most don't. But the point being is that when you trade the regular trading hours during the day session, the market is actually like moving. I mean, it's it's got mark to markets. It's it's um, fluid, and it's a lot less frustrating to deal with when the market is swinging. As a day trader, you want the market to swing doesn't really matter to you in which direction. You just want it to be swinging as a day trader. So I'm probably just, just going to quit trading Asia, wait until the London session. I think I'm done with resettlement to Asia altogether. Uh, Michael doesn't teach it, number one. And um, market's not really moving most of the time. Sometimes it will. Tonight, tonight's was a good example of that, but I mean, it moved plenty. It's it's moved way more than enough for you to make good money during the regular trading hours. Even though it moved more in the overnight session, I mean, it's, it's moved way more than enough. These are really healthy swings. Even trade on one contract. Hell, even if I, I mean, even if I made a half of this on one contract, fourteen hundred dollars, that'd be fine. And do I believe that I can pull down one k a day? I think I'm pretty close, yeah. I know the PD arrays that I like. Got the 0950 to 1010 macro, 1050 to 1110. The lunch session usually will also seek liquidity for 90 minutes. And then you've got, um, you've got 1450 to 1510 macro. That's going to come in and seek liquidity as well. Market on closed macro, 1515 to 1545 can also do that. Uh, so, of course, the PM session will open up at 13.30 and will either continue down or reverse. Um, so I just, you know, part of growing and maturing as a trader is um, knowing when you're strong, knowing when um, the market's always open, guys. I mean, except the weekends, it's open. Uh, it's just a question of, like, when do you think you can pull down the most consistent returns? I've already told you that I don't trade from, um, I well, I broke that rule today, but but ideally I do not trade from uh, 08.15 New York local time to 09.45, which is economic releases in the New York Open. I cut those out. Uh, I won't trade FOMC Wednesday, so if it's FOMC like it was yesterday, won't trade until really like the last, the PM session. Right, not the AM session before it, but the PM session, like fourteen hundred onwards, basically. This was a tradable swing; both directions were tradable. Short there, a five-minute chart could have gotten short right there on that order block, uh, as as it traded below that candle's low target, like the this low here. That was a good trade, and then on the way back up, you see that the market was drawing up to this uh, fair value gap here, Sibby. That was also a tradable seventy-three up to. 613, that was 40 points just to just to fill in that SIBI. Nice and easy, 40 points, that's $800 on con one contract, $1,600 on two contracts, and I mean, that was that was bread and butter. I mean, that was a bread and butter trade right there. So it's learning not to push it, not to push it too hard, and that's really hard for me because I'm a pusher. Um, you don't have to push it to make a lot of money. You really don't. You don't have to push it at all. The market's just being difficult and you don't really know what it's doing, don't push it. So I kind of figured that the market here was going to draw back down to like 800 evens. I'm not sure at this point if it's going to do that. So
Not sure. You see how the market has slowed down a lot and the fluctuations are coming in slowly. The market's not so fluid right now. That's kind of like all of what Asia is and it's just hard, it's just hard. You need the market to be moving. I need the market to be moving. I don't do well when the market's not moving. I don't care in which direction. It just needs to be fluctuating, swinging. It's just hanging there. I don't like that at all. It makes it very, makes me very anxious. Makes it very difficult to read. Of course, we're right on a fair value gap here. Uh, so I'll probably work that out. I'll just clone that box right there. Like I made a video on the ICT inverted fair value gap reaper. Do you actually need the reaper to make money? No. No. You don't. Guys, fair value gaps and order blocks. All you need. Really all you we even only need one of those, but I use I fair value gaps and order blocks. Gaps and blocks. Okay. Uh Looks like that's going to hold. I'm going to get long one. And uh, stop is going to go there. So 19 point stop. It's 380 risk. But it looks like this fair value gap is going to hold. And that might be a breakaway gap. Five minute time frame. Uh, so that's kind of what I'm hoping right now that price does not want to come back and trade through this fair value gap at this point after making that a green candle that would be the uh, ideal scenario and then what Michael talks about is that when you've got these wicks you want to see price accelerate through it so okay we're long one um, I'm assuming it's going to draw up to the low of this green candle, 863 spot 25. That's where I will put, I'll put it one, yeah, we'll do that, 863. That's a re-delivery, or yeah, re-delivery of this five minute fair value gap. It's probably going to make a new high on the day, but maybe not during the lunch session. I don't know. It's kind of looking like it though. Yeah, so 3K, 3.1K is certainly enough for me on the day. If this trade works out, uh, I'm gonna be I'm gonna be done. I think probably wise for me to be done. One contract's not gonna hurt me if it if it comes back t too far. Uh, okay, I'm gonna put in a break even stop now at 8:30. Yeah, I mean when I get funded, I have no desire to blow a funded account again so it'll probably just be one account one contract trading uh, no Asia they get started during London at a minimum and then regular trading hours uh, no New York Open no economic releases no FOMC Wednesday for me um, I think if I do all those things I wait till London there's a macro that I'm aware of in London that he does not teach, but I'm aware of it. It's it's one oh one fifty to two ten. Uh, the market will start spooling to liquidity at that time. That's probably when my day will start. Oh one fifty, right before the uh, Frankfurt Stock Exchange opens, and uh, that'll probably be the start of my day. It's oh one fifty New York local time, which would be twelve fifty my time. I want to trade then, but I won't trade resettlement to Asia kind of done with that the market doesn't typically move enough and even if it does move it's very strange price action to me this is normal price action right fluid movement i don't like i don't like the way that let's say that the market you know really does move during asia it's it's usually lethargic 
It's not very exciting. Uh, it's a kind of strange feeling to me, and I don't like it. Not only does Michael not teach resettlement to Asia, but it just the, the price moves strangely. I don't know how else to say that. It doesn't move fluidly like this. This is my comfort zone. This is when the market is actually moving. Whether it moves you know, with me or against me, it's really irrelevant. I just want it to be moving. And so when the market was doing this last night, you got to understand that it wasn't moving fluidly up through this Asian session. It was moving lethargically. And, and guys, it doesn't matter how far it moved up. It's just the way that it did it was, was not something I'm comfortable with. Now, if I got started at 0150, right, 0150, you can see that the market came back down. That was probably, that was a good trade right there, that fair value gap right there. So, in any event, I'd rather deal with the regular trading hours than I would the Asian session, even if the Asian session is directional and the New York session is not, because they make the candles form differently. They just do. Uh, you, will, you will notice that if you trade the NASDAQ enough. I trade it every day, so I kind of know it's, I'm getting familiar with its idiosyncrasies, is the proper word. You know, so I was talking with my father about this, and I told him that trading is not like being an attorney. You, 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 you kind of make all of your money in these bursts, and you can't grind it out steady state. That's not how this works. You get, you get this. You know, Roger Banks is right about this. You do get decision making fatigue. That's a very real thing. And and believe me, I'm in good shape, guys, and I'm always hydrated, and I still get decision making fatigue. You'll, you'll hit one too many trades and then you'll be, you know, out, right? So. All right, market should push through this fair value gap here. But that being said, I'm just going to put my sell stop here and call it, I'm going to call it a day if I get filled on that sell stop. Not because I don't think it's going to push through. I do think it's going to push through. But because I've made enough money for today, uh, I can rest assured I can come tomorrow with a good, healthy lead on the account. And I'm happy with that. Today's very was a very good day once I got it going. So... That would be like 3200 right there. I'm happy with that. And I don't want to risk this open profit. I want to get it into profit. And um, I'll let the rest of the day play out, really. Okay, I do think we are going to be stopped out here. I, don't think, I think that candle is going to be uh, black. Going to find some initial resistance here. Okay, we are stopped out, guys. That's going to be my trading day. That's 32.56. Um, I'm going to log out. I'm going to be done. Uh, again, it, guys, it has nothing to do with me not being confident in my ability to trade further. It has everything to do with me wanting to go ahead and call it and uh, wait until tomorrow. Um, I'll show you the executions for the day. Of course, the market's going to end up doing exactly what I thought it would, but whatever. I don't care. Um, regular trading hours so you can see we started shorting doing some more shorting more shorting and then as the market came you know started doing some longing so that's what it looks like guys that last trade we just took was 20 points 1828 spot 75 up into uh, 1848 evens so that was um, a not, uh, sorry a 19.2 trade and uh, Yeah, yeah, guys, that was 3,200. I was trading, you see, no more than two contracts at a time during the regular trading hours here. Uh, we've been working in a 138-point range, so pretty big size range today, but obviously the market really hasn't gone anywhere during the regular trading hours, but that doesn't matter to me. Um, so 
that's going to be it for me on the day. Um, kind of an early day, but I don't want to risk this open profit at this point. I'm going to go ahead and just call it. So, all right, guys, y'all have a good one. Um, I'm going to upload this uh, as Trading New York Lunch. So, bye-bye.